Hey everybody, so I'm super excited to do an updated German culture shock and I spent in the last year and a half 104 days in Germany. In those 104 days, I want to clarify, I did not really do touristy things like the normal tours. I felt like I tried to live like a German. I lived in a German home. I did German things. So I didn't stay in hotels. I didn't go see like the tourist attractions. I actually hiked three different trails. The Malawig Trail, I think it's close to the Czech Republic. Public. and then I hiked the witch trail which I climbed the tallest mountain in northern Germany super cool and then I solo hiked the Hamburg trail which uh, I, forget, I keep forgetting the name it's something and I did a hundred kilometers of that and uh, yeah that was super super cool to hike the three different trails in Germany so I really got a very unique taste of being an American in Germany, especially since I was just thrown in with Germans. So the very first thing that was just a major culture shock for me is I got naked in front of a lot of Germans in a sauna. And just to give you a little bit of background on me, I come from a conservative religious background. So yes, getting naked in front of actually women and men, it just it was a pretty big culture shock for me to go to a German sauna. It was super cool though. I did not feel ashamed. Everybody felt warm and accepting if that's a correct term to say because yeah sauna it's pretty warm in there so everybody was kind i didn't see like anybody staring at people and like oh making judgy like oh how dare your body looks like that so i kind of really loved that i felt like it was like at home actually going to the sauna was one of the funnest things i did in germany just because i left like i felt like a million dollars i jumped in the ice cold water that was outside and it's like zero celsius and i'm like jumping in the water and then i like run back in and like get into a warm sauna and that different body temperature stuff it just made me feel alive so i have to thank germany for that again i come from mostly from florida now and i just don't see saunas i don't know if saunas really are that big of a thing in north america the other really crazy thing i saw is definitely something you cannot do in the united states is the beer situation first there's like 16 year olds in a bar which whoa in the u.s it's a 21 or over same thing with smoking so when you see like a 16 year old drinking a beer in germany you're like holy cow like yeah shouldn't you be at school <laughs> so that was huge germans love their beer and they do have like probably one of the best beers of the whole world i'll, I'll give it to you right there I can't really think of anything. I've had some really good beers, but Germany does have some awesome beers. So like uh, one other thing with the beer thing is people can actually walk on the streets drinking beer. I remember actually watching this video of a guy. He was actually showing the uh, small town and he's like, this is the old church. And he cracks open a beer and he starts drinking the beer. And I'm like, that's the German way right there. So I absolutely love it. I think beer in Germany just go hand in hand same thing with Germany has some really awesome yeah meat sausages okay I have to talk about the bathroom situation in Germany because like you go to the train station or you're on the Autobahn and you have to pay to use the bathroom and one thing I noticed is like okay I gave you like 60 euros in gas and I remember asking like okay hey can I use your restroom she's like oh yeah that's like one or two more euros and I'm like wait what it's like i thought you know i'm a paying a customer maybe you would let me and she's like no it's like one or two i forget what she said maybe it was this one euro and i'm like no it's okay secretly in my head i was thinking i'd rather just get completely naked and run through a bunch of nettles which are just so painful and they're all over germany but i would rather go through all that pain than to pay one or two euros to use the bathroom it's really hard for me to want to pay for the bathroom that to me just like Oh, come on. But of course, if you go to a restaurant, there's other places that it's free. But definitely, you have to expect that. Like, I think the train station, too. It's like we're paying for a ticket. Can we please use your restroom without having to pay for it? And that was fascinating. Which, speaking of the train system, oh, my God, it is awesome in Germany. You can get to a lot of places. I know that the place I was at, I think I had to hike like eight kilometers or six kilometers to get to the train station. So it was a little bit of a distance, though. But I love the train station in Germany. It was a little confusing. It took me one or two times to get used to it. I think in Hamburg, I asked for some help, and I didn't get to spend any 
any time in Hamburg. I only got to spend like, you know, 30 minutes and then I actually hopped on the trail. So I was instantly into the woods. And here's something else interesting is Germany camping is not allowed. Coming from the United States, you can pretty much camp anywhere. And I'm not even in the United States right now, and I'm actually camping on this river and I'm all alone. So it was really interesting to experience that. And I do think that the United States in a few hundred years will catch up to Germany and it will probably go into that same system of no camping. But right now there's so much open space in the country. I'm actually in Canada right now and there's just ridiculous open space. So I am uh, just, I'm enjoying this river <laughs> and this is mine and I get to camp here for free and I totally for leaving no trace. So when I hiked those trails in Germany, I definitely had to ask owners if it was okay to set up your tent. But we got permission to camp here so everything is good or you could just you know try to improvise maybe find a hostel or something but yeah most people were very very generous especially if it was a small town which i loved it i just hit nothing but small towns and yeah the people were the kindest in the world i remember hiking i believe it was the witch trail and just ran into two other hikers and None of the small towns would take my debit card, my debit card, or my uh, credit cards because they're through Visa or Mastercard, which is like the to-go thing in America. So none of the small towns that would take it. I think they have like a German card, bank card to use, but uh, most of them wanted cash. And these are like small villages, and I'm like. Oh shoot, and one of the hikers is like, here, I'll spot you like a hundred euros. And it's like, I trust you, you'll pay me back. And okay, right on. I was like, I just met you, thank you so much. Uh, and I think that's the big thing about Germans is there is so many nice Germans that, yes, at the end of the trial, we actually finished together and I was able to pay him back. Super nice guy, his name was actually Creamy Balls. And uh, Captain was there too. And uh, if you know hikers, we kind of just come up with crazy names. I can't German names to me I am terrible with names I, I think most uh, people from my culture from the United States are pretty good with names not me I am terrible with names terrible at learning language Germany and their bread oh my god so I have to explain the bread situation in Germany. As an American, we have like the worst bread ever. I know we have bakeries, I never go to those, but I'm talking about like, you go into the supermarket in America, just a normal one, not like an actual bakery. Like we have German bakeries too. But uh, if you go into the market in America, like, oh, you find these slices of bread, they're like so processed, they're gross. And honestly, it's just, it, it doesn't even feel healthy. It messes up your stomach and everything. Germans love their bread. And I actually uh, worked on an Airbnb for a little bit and a lot of Netherlands people came too and I got to cook breakfast. And one time I didn't have bread, the bread got messed up. So I did the American thing, I think I cooked, I had cheese, I had eggs, I had some meat going on, I had potatoes. And like I made like a stir fry kind of thing and they're like, oh, that was really good. But that was like a lunch you fed us and like, we really need bread for breakfast. And they're like, we're gonna stay one more night. And I was like, you know, I got it. Let me redo it. So I actually ran to the bakery. First time I ever went into like a German bakery, of course as an American. And she didn't know any English, but it's pretty easy. German still, I mean, communication is a lot of body language. So I'm like, I'll take this one, this one, this one, this one. And it's like, I have to get the bread. And they were super happy. So I definitely see that Germans and yeah, those Netherlands guys giving me a lecture on the bread. Bread is super, super important in Germany. Not so much in the United States. And again, oh man, if you go go to one of our supermarkets like Walmart or you know just one of those big chain ones and see the kind of bread they have and it's like ah oh, no good no good at all Germans are the nicest people but also I have to say this Germans also can be the meanest people I had three kind of rough encounters in Germany and one was uh wasn't really bad it was just a taxi driver and we just had a miscommunication and he just yelled at me and something I think I'm a foreigner go away go learn German or something like that and I just was asking for help and the taxi driver just was like nope no nonsense for you 
And another guy, I was actually applying for a visa and he wouldn't even let me into the government building and he told me to bring a translator. And it's like, I'm not allowed in without a translator. And I'm like, ouch, like <laughs> that hurts. Uh, like, okay, I'm, I'm getting a theme here too. It's like some people really want me to speak German so badly. And again, I tried really hard and my accent is terrible. Like, danke schön, uh, guten Morgen. Uh, there's like words I get, I think danke schön, my accent is just horrible. I, yeah, I sound interesting, I was told. <laughs> And my third encounter was with a guy who just was, he hated me from the moment I arrived in Germany. He said I was too fat, he wanted me to go. He even kind of said like he wanted to have like a tractor accident for me or that's how they would take care of somebody like me back in the day. I don't know, this guy just completely hated me though. So my third week in Germany, I ended up running into the guy and I ended up actually giving him the middle finger. And I was like, hey, I mean, he's going on. I try to kill him with kindness. It didn't work out. And so I gave him the middle finger and said, hey, I've had enough of you. <laughs> like, come on. Uh, like, I did nothing wrong to you. I've been nothing but trying to be kind to you. And it actually worked and he actually got a little bit nicer to me. But uh, the biggest thing I learned from that encounter was that giving the middle finger in Germany is actually a crime so here it is I am admitting to committing a crime in Germany and I hope the authorities are kind to me but uh, I don't regret doing it again I think the middle finger is uh, considered like a kindness uh, no it's gonna so I understand that the middle finger is supposed to be a politeness law. And again, the German was not being polite to me. So my response was I wasn't going to be polite back to him. And I think that I got a little bit of a murdery vibes from him though too. So I don't regret doing it. And of course, if the German authority wants to uh, bring me up on charges for that, uh, so be it. I will accept my punishment. But I heard it's pretty rare and also something really interesting which i'm kind of really curious to go through the german legal system now is in my country we have jurors that i can be a juror and it's normally about 12 people and they get to decide your fate if you're guilty or not they hear evidence from lawyers my understanding in germany they don't have those juries they just have the lawyers and the judge and then they actually i guess they just present their cases and then they make a sentencing whether the person is guilty based on the evidence that kind of sounds pretty logical and I love that because it does sound logical because I feel like a jury like me I'm not trained in law so if there's a lawyer who can speak really really well he might actually persuade me like hey there's no way that guy's that guy's innocent let him go let him go he did not kill those 12 people he's free and uh so I'm not 100% sure on the German uh law thing but you can correct me if I'm wrong but it does sound like a really cool system I never even thought of other countries like that having a system I kind of just always assumed that every country did the jury thing where it just like you select 12 random people and then we get to decide your fate if you're guilty or innocent after hearing the evidence so it was really interesting to hear that so i got to drive on the autobahn in germany i think once or twice as a passenger and one thing i really noticed is that yeah there's no speed limits between towns in a lot of towns so you can go as fast as you want and that's to me terrifying but again it's really hard to get a license in germany so i think that their accident rate is pretty low and that's kind of really fascinating that's more like personal responsibility and i kind of like it like that that's actually really really cool germany maybe one day i'll actually get into a car and i can actually drive on the german highway and actually give it a try on the autobahn and yeah see how i do although it sounds terrifying and i don't think i would go over 100 miles per hour but it definitely which 100 miles per hour is like 160 kilometers and i think that's a pretty good safe like ooh, okay <laughs> Another huge thing I knew about Germany is a lot of the shops are owned by mom and pop shops. And what I mean by that is that they're family owned, like a husband and wife owned them. And I love that so much because honestly, in the United States, it's so corporate. Things can be open 24 seven and you can get food like at three in the morning or you can get this at three in the morning. Things are open and it's owned by a corporation. And yeah, things are just open 
all week long. And in Germany, I noticed a lot of places close at 6 p.m. or earlier because they're actually owned by a family and they go home to their families. So I love that about Germany because it feels so family oriented and everything actually almost is closed on Sundays. A few things are open on Sundays. I think the garden shop and some restaurants are open on Sundays, but most everything is closed in Germany on Sundays. And I love that so much too. Again, that seems like more time to spend with family and friends. And in the United States, it's like, I remember as my childhood, it seemed a little bit more like that. But now it just seems like, again, the United States has turned really corporate. And it seems like it's just all about money flowing in and out and all this craziness. And when you get corporations like that, you kind of get that really cheap bread. And I don't mean to hate, I love my culture too, so I'm not trying to hate on my culture. There's some positives about corporations. And <laughs> please, evil corporations, I come in peace. <laughs> I called you evil though. I mean, loving corporations, I come in peace. So yeah, with corporations, you don't get stuff that is so homemade, awesome. And I think that's a good way to explain it is with corporations, yeah, you get bread, but it's just not very good bread. With a mom and pop store, you get the really good stuff. That's something else, my best hiking shoes came from Germany. I had bought like four Ultras from the United States and they did not last as long as one pair from Germany. I totally forgot the name of them. I think it starts with an A or an M or something. I'm so sorry, but the boots are like, yeah, again, I, my next pair of boots that I'm hiking with will be German just because of that. I think Germany is known to have high quality items. And I think, again, maybe that has a lot to do with that mom and pop stuff. So something else really kind of crazy I noticed in Germany is you can't wash your car in Germany. This to me is like, holy cow, I want to wash my car, which... You can't wash your car on your own is what I mean. You have to take it somewhere and you have to go to one of those car shops. And I think what they do is they filter the water and it's all about, I get it, they wanna keep it that there's 85 million people in Germany and if everybody is washing their cars and all that soap went into the uh, land, it just pollutes the land. So I 100% get it. It just to me was really, really shocking that, oh my God, I can't wash the car. Or also I can't mow the grass on Sundays, which I, again, I am all for that i think the united states we need to adopt the no cutting grass on sundays because that's again should be a day maybe of rest and spend time with family and friends and yeah go out to your garden you don't want to have loud noises going on you want to relax on sunday so i do like some of those things in germany that it just sounds more wholesome in a lot of ways but now speaking of wholesomeness i will say that i was pointed out a few times while driving as a passenger that this is a brothel and uh i won't go into what a brothel is if you don't know what it is that's okay and uh that to me was uh, definitely a huge culture shock again i come from a conservative religious background so when i saw that i was like oh my god like this is legal in germany and it's like Okay, right on. So I am here. I'm not, no judgment at all. I actually think that's really cool. It's supposed to be the oldest profession in the world. And that's fascinating that that's actually legal in Germany. There's only one place in the United States and that's actually around Las Vegas, not in Las Vegas, but the counties around it. That's the only place in the United States that that's legal. And uh, yeah, it's not normal. You don't see that and nobody ever like goes there. It's kind of in the middle of the desert. So it's like completely far, far away. So that was very, very interesting. So Germany is very wholesome on one hand, but they're actually very freeing on the other hand. And that was again, a huge culture shock. Germany also has the coolest windows I've actually ever seen. In the United States, we just have them lift up and down. That's pretty much the basic thing. Sometimes you can get them to open up like this, but most of the time they're just super boring. They're not functional. In Germany, the windows were doing all kinds of crazy things. They're opening up from the side. You can open them all the way up. And to me, I love that. I almost wanted to call it some type of witchcraft or wizardry, wizardry I can't even talk. I wanted to call it some type of witchcraft that Germany has going on some superpowers how these windows work because of course I am not used to that so those windows definitely were honestly kind of confusing at first though like yeah how do they work I've never seen those before and yeah there's a lot of different things about Germany that I wasn't used to that just everything's just slightly different and okay I have to talk about the food a little bit in Germany so I one time I when I was hiking the trail on Hamburg that I hiked 25 kilometers without eating anything I ran out of food 
road. I actually ran into a McDonald's for the first time and I was super excited. And when I entered the McDonald's, they were like super nice. They were younger Germans and they're like, oh my God, you're from the United States. And they were like, yes, I my German is terrible. I am so sorry. And they're like, oh, no worries. We speak English. Great. And it's like, this is how it works. And uh, because of COVID, you have to sign in and stuff. And uh, so they're like, just any questions? And like, yeah, I ate that. And that was probably one of the best hamburgers of my life. Maybe because I was starving, but the meat definitely tasted less corporate. And again, I mentioned the United States feels really corporate. Again, I love you corporations. I hope you're not watching or listening. So the meat at McDonald's tasted awesome. Awesome. I really enjoyed the hamburger. It was a very unique experience to go to McDonald's. And I love that everybody was super, super nice. And uh, I definitely picked that up on cultures, how they treat people who are different. And I felt like Germans were incredibly accepting, except those three gentlemen. I also noticed that Germans have a lot of very interesting food, such as kangaroo. I saw this about two or three times in my stays in Germany. So it's a little bit, seems a little bit more the norm, because I've never seen that in my entire life and then all of a sudden I come to Germany I see kangaroo meat and of course I love trying new things and trying a different culture so of course I tried the kangaroo meat it was very good also I figured out kangaroos actually can be very violent and punching so they're not as cute and friendly as I thought they were so maybe I'm okay with eating them <laughs> But something I saw that was slacking in Germany is shellfish. So I'm used to like crab and shrimp and like lots of shellfish from the United States. I grew up in Florida with the oceans and always shellfish coming in. And that was something really, really hard to find in Germany was the shellfish. So I think that you're only getting locally sourced meat and products. So finding things like shellfish seemed a lot more difficult in Germany. But again, I only was in small towns. I didn't really get to explore the giant cities. Uh, eating a live baby shrimp. When in Germany. Actually, it's pretty good. So I would like to actually start doing a grade for my culture shocks and visiting Germany. I give Germany an A hands down. I absolutely would want to visit it. And I'm always looking at a place that, hey, maybe I want to move somewhere someday. And I did a ton of research in Germany. And I will say that I was looking at one time a house in Germany, which was about a half a million US dollars. And it was not even close to being move in ready. So I was looking at housing, I was looking at electricity and electricity was about six times more expensive than it was when I was currently living in Florida. And the, a lot of different things like taxes and everything's a lot more in Germany. So all around, I would not actually want to move to Germany. So I give anybody who's interested in moving to Germany, I would give it a D because of that. Of course, if you don't have health care, which I have excellent health care, uh, but if you don't have things like health care or anything, Germany can be really, really awesome. And they have incredibly like sick days, the holidays. You're always going to get Sunday off too. There's a lot of pros to moving to Germany. But for me personally, I'd never see myself wanting to move to Germany. Visit Germany hands down. An A. Wanting to live in Germany, I give it a D. And that's nothing personal against Germany that I don't want to live in Germany. It's just it's the cost for me. And the other question is now after I visited Germany and I give it an A for visiting Germany, would I ever want to go back? And a hundred percent yes. When I return to Germany, I definitely want to visit Southern Germany more like I heard that's more of the Oktoberfest side of Germany too, that they're really big into Oktoberfest, which is very interesting and uh, find some good beer, right? And when I do plan on returning to Germany, I will more than likely fly in through Ramstein Air Force Base and then explore Explore that area, including southern Germany. So if you live anywhere in that area and you want to reach out to me, definitely go for it. And then maybe we can somehow connect or something like that. And I'll be more than happy to learn more about your culture or you can show me around your village or town or city. I would love that. I also want to do some hiking in the Alps are there in southern Germany. So yes, that's on my bucket list to go into. So please just reach out to me if you think that, hey, that's something interesting that you would be interested in hosting this American 
American and yeah, why not? Life is short and we're all brothers and sisters. So I am excited to go back to Germany and visit again. And I love everybody. I want you to have a beautiful day. I hope that you got some value out of this video. If you did, definitely comment, like, and subscribe down below. And that tells YouTube that, hey, this guy's worth watching. And yeah, that's awesome. And of course, if you don't like it, oh, I'm sorry, man. Uh, there's somebody else out there for you, though. It's okay. Okay, I love you. Have a great day. Bye.